it is currently June 23rd on a Tuesday and I will be starting my reading vlog for Clockwork Angel, uh, no not Clockwork Angel, Clockwork Princess, duh, by Cassandra Clare and this is part of my reread of the entire Shadowhunter series and I am so excited. I'm currently on chapter 6, uh, maybe, I think, wait, chapter 7. No, I'm on chapter 6. Um, I just didn't feel like vlogging the past few days just because I was trying to catch up with a video uh, that goes up before this. So, uh, my book haul. And I am just really excited to read this one because the entire book I'm either crying, laughing, or on the verge of finding a way to physically and realistically smack Will Herondale. Um, like, don't get me wrong, he is one of my absolute favorite characters, but this entire book is either me crying about him, laughing at him, or wanting to actually smack him because of some of his idiotic actions, ideas, thoughts, and, you know, theories, and some of his just lack of common sense. So, I will keep you guys updated. I'm going to be reading outside today because it is just so nice. It's 77 with a nice light breeze and it's sunny. So I'm just gonna read and enjoy my frozen whipped coffee latte, which is kind of melted by now. But I will update you guys here in a little bit. Um, yeah, that's all I gotta say. It's good day to read and enjoy the weather. All right, so it is kind of a lot later um, in the day. I was slow to reading today, but um, I am on chapter nine, so I'm about mm, 200 pages into Clockwork Princess, and Jessamine has just arrived back at the Institute after two months in the Bone City with the Silent Brothers, um, and I kind of got about the fact that the consul has Gideon and Gabriel spy on Charlotte's uh, correspondence um because I'm like wait why is this relevant and then I'm like wait the consul doesn't want Charlotte appointed to be his successor so he's trying to like find information to discredit her so that um, she won't be appointed his successor because he just, he doesn't want her there, but I don't remember why exactly. Um, but I find it funny that Sophie catches, uh, Gideon and Gabriel going through her mail, um, and then she's straight up volunteers to help them when she reads the letter that Gideon had written and planned to send to the console, because they aren't actually, like, um, sending her private information to the console, they're lying about it so that, um, Charlotte's not hurt, but the console doesn't trust her, and the console does not, like, strip Gabriel and their sister Tatiana of their marks. Um, I always forgot that, and I kind of think it's just a little funny tidbit that they put in, that Cassandra Clare put in here, uh, because other than that, this book is kind of really sad and depressing. Oh. Tessa is struggling so much not to tell Jem and Will that she loves the both of them. And they, Jem and Tessa just moved their wedding date up to like that day or the following day, like the next few days. Um, Will is like absolutely heartbroken because he like shuts off all his emotion. Um, you can see a slight romance between Cecily and Gabriel forming, and then Gideon and Sophie are slowly mending their, um, sort of relationship that they had, more so friendship, um, since Sophie found these scones. There were scones under his bed, because he would call every day just to see her for scones. Uh, she would make the scones, and she would bring them up and down the stairs. Like, she'd carry the trays up and then bring the tray down. Uh, she found the scones under his bed because he wasn't really eating them because he didn't like the scones, but he wanted to see her. So he would call for the scones, and she got really upset. And, uh... <laughs> but, like, 
the letters Gabriel and Gideon are writing is just like one small way they're slowly getting back to where they were together um and I think it's really cute like there's some really cute scenes but otherwise it's really depressing because we know Jem is gonna die like that that's yeah <sighs> I might read another chapter or two of this tonight because chapter 10 chapter 9 is only like 16 pages and chapter 10 is only a little more than 30 so that's like another 40 pages tonight I think I could do that uh, but uh, for the most part I think I will update you guys tomorrow morning when I go out and I have coffee in the morning and read some. Alrighty guys, so it is currently um, Wednesday evening and I have read a little more of Clockwork Princess. I did not end up reading the one to two chapters that I had planned to last night because I felt kind of sick so I just went to bed and I've been reading today and I'm on page 244. I started on page 200 um, and I want to cry. Um, yeah, I did not realize it was so early in the book that Jem discovers Will is in love with Tessa. Um, and I did not remember the fact that Tessa got kidnapped by the automatons, um, but I am really enjoying it and I will update you guys here before I go to bed just so you guys can get an idea of what I have read all together today. Alright, so it is about 6 o'clock the following evening. Um, I did not update last night before I went to bed because I was very exhausted. Um, I ended up reading to page... 257 so chapter 12 last night um and I was gonna update this morning but I got up late and then I was swimming most of the day uh so I did not read it all today I am going to actually just now pick up the book for the first time today to read and I'm loving where I'm at um I love how Jem realizes that even though Will loves Tessa it's probably the best case scenario for him because he can't trust anyone else to go after Tessa um and since Will loves her so much Jem knows that Will is going to have the same motivation that Jem would to go get her back um and Jem just wants Will to be happy so he gives him his blessing and I love that that's character growth right there and I think Will's like slowly accepting it and then I forgot the fact that um Cecily tried to get Will to stay or let her go with him to get Tessa because she was so scared she was not gonna get her brother back again um which yeah that's really sad and depressing but they have this really sweet emotional moment together and I wouldn't change that. That's a really monumental spot for them to be in. Um, and I don't know. They realize like where Mortmain is because Cecily heard what Jessamine said. Something along the lines of he's in Idris. And then Will is like, well, he's not there. Because they thought he was talking about the homeland of the Shadowhunters and not um, somewhere in Wales. Like the... Um, the mountains so that's where will is going on his own to go get tessa so yeah i will try and update you guys here in a little bit um it is really warm outside so i might end up getting back in the pool uh, but i am going to try and read some and i will let you guys know how it goes so i did actually only read one chapter last night i read to chapter 13 such a good book so far I just 
have been having issues like wanting to stay awake and having energy to do things that I really should be doing. Um, but I am going to be reading tonight because I do plan to try and finish Clockwork Princess tomorrow. Um, I know I'm only halfway through it, but I'm going to try and read as much of it as possible tonight and finish it up tomorrow because I do really enjoy this and I just want to, I think my issue with not being able to read as much or have the energy to read is I know this book emotionally destroys roys me every time I read it um and I don't know if I'm ready for that again um but I will be trying to get that done and over with as quick as possible like ripping a band-aid off um but I will keep you guys up to date I want to do that a little more but um yesterday was a bit exciting because I did get an invitation to the National Society for High School Scholars. Um, I don't have to make a decision on it until the end of next month, but it is really cool to receive and just, I don't know. I think I took all of my energy and excitement out with that <laughs> yesterday. So I will be reading this and today it's just been an issue with reading all day because I've had a really bad migraine and um so I took some aspirin didn't work I put some alcohol in my ears like rubbing alcohol uh didn't completely work it helped some and then my grandma had this lotion it's hemp lotion and so she had me put it on my temples and it helped so much knock on wood because I don't want it to start hurting again but I'm going to try and read this and I will update you guys in about an hour. So, Alright, so it has been an hour and I successfully read chapters 13 and 14 completely through um, before the hour was up and I cried several times in both chapters just because, so in chapter 13, at the beginning, Jem is telling Charlotte that he does not want them to continue to look for a cure um and I think he told Will that he was going to let them look for a cure just so that Will would feel secure enough in going to get Tessa and save her for him um but if Jem hadn't told everyone oh you can look for a cure let Will at least think that he was going to continue to let them look for a cure that Will wouldn't have gone if he didn't think people were trying to save Jem. Um, and it's so sad because you realize that too. And then I really liked the execution of how um, Cassie Clare wrote Jem dying like from the per point of view of someone at the Institute, um, from Cecily's point of view. Cause she's talking with Gabriel when Jem dies and it's not like she can emotionally feel it but she can feel the sorrow for her brother as she notices that Jem is dead and how important Jem was to her brother and his moral compass and the choices he made in his life after he came to live at the institute um and I, I really liked that and then I always forget the fact that Will runs into Woolsey Scott at um, one of the like inns that he stops at on his way to go find Tessa. And I forgot the fact that Tessa throws herself out of the carriage and jumps over a cliff and her like clockwork angel necklace g gets bigger and kind of like, saves her from splat. Um, like she was still injured, yes. Uh, I just kind of forgot that all happened. I thought like she made it all the way to Kader Idris and I don't know if I said that right, but I hope I said that right. Um, and like was stuck there when Will came to rescue her. Don't know, like I don't remember exactly how it goes. I just know like she's ends up safe in the end. Um, my heart broke when Will felt his parapetai bond break 
like I uh, my heart broke oh my god I'm going to cry again it was so sad like I love Jem and I know what happens to him I know his path like after this but Will doesn't and it's so heartbreaking that Will doesn't know because he's losing hope and faith and he doesn't know how to go on and it's really sad and I'm going to cry um I think I'm gonna take maybe a 10 15 minute break eat a Kit Kat um and then pick it up and read some more uh, I might update you guys after maybe another hour hour and a half um but I will definitely update you guys because it's getting really good and I'm loving it okay so I just finished reading for another hour and a half and it's currently 10 30 um but I am now on page 368 and wow a lot has happened um I don't know like, I love Jem and everything, but I think the plot flows a lot better when everyone's not so worried and panicking over his uh, state of health. But that is also how normal life goes. Like, you can function better when you're not worried about someone's physical state of health constantly. Um, and... Will is just so desperate to get to Tessa again. Tessa... Um, agreed to change into um, John Shade for um, Mortmain because he offered to send the rest of the all the Yinfen that he had to Jem Tessa, not knowing that Jem is dead, um, and <laughs> not realizing that the information he needed for the binding spell. Um, only John Shade knew, and by, like, changing into him, John Shade was able to give Mortmain all of the information that he needed to go through with his plan, and then I don't understand why he wants to come up with or breed a new race of like shadow hunters and demons with Tessa that's kind of creepy considering he is double her age more so um because uh he was alive before Tessa's mom was alive so that's kind of gross that pedophilia because she she's 17 and ooh, yeah that's not good um not here for that um i really like gabriel's character growth in this book so far um he's come to not only understand his moral compass more but also where his loyalty should lie like your loyalty should not just solely be to your family no matter what they do because just because their family does not mean they get a free pass from all wrongdoing he has realized that he should follow his morals and what he deems as good and right and that's where his loyalty should lie and I absolutely love that and I absolutely love that it was Cecily's words that got to him truly from sending this very incriminating letter to the consul about Charlotte um and I love how Charlotte goes against the consul because consul Wayland is just an asshat who should not be in power because he's a bigot and a sexist ass. So, I'm really happy with where we're at. Um, I am in the middle of a chapter. I am on chapter, I have 10 more pages of this chapter, but I'm on chapter 17. Uh, and there's 24 chapters plus the epilogue. So I'm getting closer to being done. Um, I still, do have let's see there's 570 pages in this book I still have oh I'm actually just about at the 200 page mark left so that is awesome um and I will 
I want to read more tonight. Um, I might read another hour and then update you guys before going to bed. I will do that. Hey guys, so it is 2.30 the next day um, and I just finished reading chapter 17. Oh, it's so good. Um, I totally forgot that uh, Gideon does that with Sophie. Mm. I love their relationship. It is so pure and sweet and amazing. I love it. And then I think Gabriel is really noticing his feelings towards Cecily and it's so sweet. I love it. And then Charlotte is just such an empowered badass. I love her. Um, that's all I have to say for now. <laughs> I will update you guys um, once I've read maybe another chapter or two because I'm on chapter 18 and so that means I have about six chapters left including the epilogue so I'll update you guys here all right so it is later in the day um I am currently on page like 380 something so I am very close uh to the end but I did start a project today that I've been wanting to do for a while so I want to put um, quotes and pictures on this specific wall that I have in my room because I have a little wall um, like right before my closet and so I went and I found a whole bunch of quotes that I liked I um, typed them up and print them out and then cut them out and then I found pictures that I liked and I'm going to put them all up like on this wall but I still have a lot more pictures to print well not print but like cut out and it's gonna take me a while so I think I'm going to save the rest of that for tomorrow but I am going to like take a break from this instead of doing it all right now and I'm going to read some more so that I can finish Clockwork Princess today because that is my goal um yeah I am actually on page 388 so I really am close to um like 170 pages left so I will update you guys in an hour to an hour and a half on what I've read I'm going to just read for an hour and a half straight so it is now 9 30 I read for an hour and a half and I read about 60 pages um because I am now on page 443 and so much has happened I have less than 130 pages left oh this is going to be amazing um so all the shadow hunters from the London Institute went and took the portal Henry and Magnus created together to Kadir Idris to assist Will in saving um Tessa and uh, Tessa and Will slept together when he finally got there because she admitted her feelings for him and it kind of just escalated. I mean a lot of people don't understand the action and with all the emotion there especially because Tessa is just finding out that Jem is dead but there are a lot of times when your emotions and grief take over and you look for security in the people that are around you and her love for Will already it made it just so much harder to resist those feelings she had for him and kind of broke down all of those barriers which is what I've always considered why they end up getting together at that point in time instead of later on um and if i'm not wrong this is the battle that they talked about or refer to in chain of gold about henry not being able to walk again um because he gets thrown by this automaton and hits the wall um and he's like out like out for the count completely out um and what else what else what else oh yeah serif blades do not work on these clockwork creatures um so that's interesting for them and what else oh yeah automatons were sent to london 
and like attacked where the console meeting was or the council because it wasn't just the console and the inquisitor it was also a sh crap ton of other shadow hunters from other institutes um starkweather is killed by an automaton and so is Consul Wayland because, yeah, something like sh flies across the room and I think it's an arrow from an automaton and like shoots him through the neck. And I mean, he kind of deserved it because he was an asshole to start with. <laughs> and then, yeah, so I have a feeling Charlotte will end up, well, I, I know what she uh, ends up as. She ends up as the either the consul or the inquisitor i don't think she's the inquisitor i think she's the consul i could be wrong but either way um it is so good i always love like the last hundred pages of a book so i do have a goal to finish this book tonight um oh. I might finish with like, oh, I don't know, 60, 70 pages left for tomorrow, but if I read at the same rate for another three hours, I might be able to finish it or have maybe like 10, 20 pages left. Um, yeah, I will update you guys in a little bit after I've read and I don't think I'm going to be working on that wall till tomorrow um after i finish this because this is my number one priority Ooh. um so it is currently midnight and i am sobbing my eyes out because i only have chapter 24 and the epilogue left of clockwork princess and i'm sobbing gems goodbye to both tessa and gem broke my heart so much um yeah. I'm a mess I'm so sorry about that but this book always emotionally destroys me and I'm never prepared for it um but the emotional connection between Tessa and Will in the end is so amazing and it just it's one of the reasons I'm such a hopeless romantic and people will never understand it and I will never get that kind of relationship and I am so desperate for it. I am pa on page 514 so I officially have only 56 pages left of this book um, and I don't think I can sleep it till I finish it. <laughs> so I will be reading so much more. Um, Charlotte accepts the role of consul. Uh, will will be taking over the institute. Sophie is engaged to Gideon. Um, I believe we find out in this chapter that Cecily and Gabriel are going to like get together because um, they did kiss. They had this like really cute makeout session in the um, stables and oh, Hen that was the battle where Henry loses the ability to walk but he's like so determined to make himself like a wheelchair like invent a wheelchair and it's amazing I love his determination it's so sweet um, and Bridget continues with her annoying weird depressing and kind of cruel songs that use Will's name I don't know it's Mm, I'm going to cry some more. I will update you guys once I finish because I will be finishing this before I go to sleep tonight. I don't know what to say. Hold on. It's 3.30 in the morning. It's obvious I was sobbing. I can't coherently think. Why do I keep rereading books that do this to me? I will. Mm -mm. I can't do this. Not right now. Okay, so it is 2 o'clock um, the next day, and 
I've had time to calm myself down and restore my emotional state to somewhere pretty decent. Um, and I just want to talk over my final thoughts of Clockwork Princess. It was amazing, um, as always, and it always broke my heart. I always forgot the epilogue was um, after City of Heavenly Fire, so how Jem gets to be not a silent brother anymore isn't revealed, but I always forgot he wasn't a silent brother anymore in the epilogue of Clockwork Princess and it actually kind of makes me really happy and it broke my heart even more like I was sobbing I was sobbing reading through um, Will dying and all of that and I think chapter 24 was actually the easiest for me to get through because it was kind of really just funny and comical um, and I cried the least in that chapter because it was kind of just wrapping everything up um, but overall, I actually gave it a 5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads, and I think all the plot lines were tied up very well. Um, there was so much character development throughout the trilogy, and I can't see it ending another way um, without, like, me being so upset with it. So, the ending made me very happy. Um, yeah, and that's really all I have to say about it. It was such a good book. I definitely recommend the series to anyone and everyone, like ever. <laughs> um, unless you don't like the love triangle plotline, because then I definitely would not recommend it because that is a very big thing. But other than that, um, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and let me know down in the comment section below if you've read Clockwork Princess, what was your most heartbreaking moment out of it? Like, I want to know what part completely and absolutely emotionally destroyed you. Because, like, the entire thing emotionally destroyed me. I can't pick one, like, one incident. Just, like, all of it. <laughs>